Today's lesson will be on introduction to polynomial functions. A polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials. And remember that they're separated by addition or subtraction. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables with whole number exponents and real number coefficients. Here's an example. Negative two-thirds x to the fourth. The coefficient is negative two-thirds. The variable is x, and four is the exponent. A polynomial function is in standard form when its terms are written in descending order of exponents from left to right. So you want the highest exponent to go first and go down from left to right. Let's try an example. Decide whether each is a polynomial function. And if it is, let's write it in standard form. So first of all, I'm noticing that the coefficients are all real numbers and that the exponents are all positive whole numbers. So it looks good. So now I want to start with the highest exponent, which is 5. And I bring that coefficient right at first. Next would be 2. And then finally, negative 2. So notice we started with the highest, and then we just went down until there appeared to be nothing. Okay, so that would be standard form, and the answer there was yes. It is a polynomial function. Here, the coefficient, um, that's a real number. 1's a real number, and 19's a real number. Now we look at the exponents. Ooh, what's the exponent here? This is really x to the 1 half power, which we'll talk more about rational exponents later. But this is not a whole number, so this is not a polynomial. So we're going to stop right there. Here, um, that's real. The coefficient is real. Um, but this is not a positive, not positive. It's got to be a positive whole number. So this is not a polynomial again. Not a polynomial function. All righty. Again, I want to emphasize... <clears throat> that um, the variables um, have to have whole number exponents. And let me add that in there, positive whole number exponents. All righty, let's continue on with part D. So we look at our coefficients. That's real. That's real. That's real. And let's look at the exam the exponents. That's positive whole and that's positive whole. So yes, this is a polynomial. And let's make sure it's in descending powers. Four, then two. Oh yeah, it's already perfect. So I'm just gonna rewrite that. Uh oh. I'm just gonna rewrite that. And it's already and perfect standard form. Let's review a few more concepts. The degree of a polynomial is simply the highest exponent. The leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent. And the constant term is the number without a variable. Thus its name, it does not vary, it is constant no matter what the variable changes to. Let's review um, some common names for polynomial functions. 
If it's degree zero, that means it's a constant term. And really the degree is really, remember that, highest exponent. So I want you to notice right here, I put x to the zero power equals one. So if it appears we have a constant term like negative three, that's really negative three times x to the zero because this equals one. So you're just looking at negative three. So when we have x to the zero power, we don't even write it. Now, if you look down our list, if the highest exponent is one, see, remember, we don't even write the one, then we consider this a linear function. Highest exponent is two, then that's a quadratic, and we just spent two chapters going over quadratic functions, so you should be very familiar with that. Cubic function has the highest exponent of three, and quartic, like four quarts in a gallon, um, that uh, has a highest exponent of four, and quintic has a highest exponent of five. Let's see how much of that you caught. In example two, let's identify the degree, the type, which is also called the name, the leading coefficient, and the constant time. So if we look at this polynomial in part A, the first thing I want to do is put it in standard form, starting with the highest exponent and going on down. And now I'm going to answer the questions. The degree would be 4. That's my degree. The type, well, if 4 is my highest degree, that means this is a quartic. Remember, 4, quartic. And now I'm also asking for the leading coefficient. That's in front of the highest one. So that's why we call it the leading coefficient. And the constant term is the one without the variable. So the constant term here is a positive two. All righty, definitely pause and give part B a try on your own. Okay, again, I'm gonna put it in standard form, starting with the highest exponent first. And now I can see my leading coefficient. On the end, I can see my constant term. And sometimes you don't have a constant term, so you would just say that it's zero. Um, here, my highest exponent is two. Two means that it's a quadratic. And notice that a quadratic is also a polynomial, just like a linear is also a polynomial. So we're understanding polynomial. Also, I'd like for you to notice that we have a different amount of terms. So this one happens to have one, two, three terms. And we remember from algebra that three terms is a trinomial. So we're just taking all this information and putting it together, okay? Sometimes we don't have a special name for the number of terms. Like in part A, one, two, three, four terms doesn't have a special name, so we just say it's a polynomial. It doesn't have a special name for the number of terms. Remember, two terms is a binomial, and one term is a monomial. So just a little extra review there. 
Let's look at example three. Evaluate each polynomial for the given value. So all we're going to do is plug negative 2 in for each of our x's. And then we're going to evaluate being very careful of order of operations. So I'm plugging in negative 2 here. This is a skill that's very helpful. Um, it'll be helpful when we start to graph. Okay. And here, I'm okay with you using a calculator for sure. But what I want to make sure you understand is that you have to do the exponent before the multiplication. So negative 2 to the fourth power, you got to watch the sign. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And another negative 2 times another negative 2 If you do those two, that's positive. See how the negatives cancel out and we just get 16 there? Whenever you have an even exponent, it makes the negative sign go away. So we've got to be careful with that. And here, there's another even exponent, so that's positive 4. Now negative times negative. See, there's no exponent. We can just say it's positive 6. And now, moving from left to right, we can combine all of these terms. You can do them two at a time because it's just addition at this point. So that's negative 20 and 17 gives me a negative 3. All righty. Let's move on and try that one more time. We're going to plug in a negative 1. And so that was f of x equals negative 3. And this is the same thing as y. It, they're interchangeable. It means the same thing. So anyway, we're going to plug in our negative 1 in for each x value. So that's an odd exponent. So the negative stays. This is an even exponent. So the negative disappears. And now we've dealt with all the exponents. So that's negative 1 minus 4 minus 1 minus 5. So I can just combine all that together for a negative. 11. And that's what f of x equals.